Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Healthy Minutes segment brought to you by Biche Cucina, we're featuring our iHeart's very own on-air personality, Lala Gonzalez, from the Lulu Lala Show, airing 7 p.m. to midnight every single day, Monday to Friday, on 103.5's KTU. Today, she's joined by our returning guest, Dr. David Rankin of David Rankin MD. Dot com, number one breast explant expert in the United States and the chief of plastic surgery at St. Mary's Medical Center in West Palm Beach, Florida. Now, Dr. Rankin has been in practice for over 20 years. He has become very well known in the breast implant illness community. That's BII. You can see that trending on social media. And Dr. Rankin stopped implanting women, very important to note, and solely focuses on explant procedures. Now, BII is a condition that isn't very well understood, but can be extremely debilitating. Breast implant illness refers to a wide range of symptoms that develop in some people who have reconstruction or cosmetic enlargement with breast implants. Now, BII isn't an official medical diagnosis because it's still not well understood. But some experts believe that breast implant illness symptoms may be caused by an autoimmune or inflammatory reaction to the implants. Now, the symptoms vary from person to person, of course, and can include fatigue, joint pain, memory and concentration problems, rashes, and so much more. Today, we're chatting breast implant illness, Lala's explant journey with the good doctor, and the warning signs and symptoms your breasts are secretly revering. Welcoming now to the show are my dear friends at at hand, Lala and Dr. David Rankin. Welcome. Thank you for having me. me. Excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining. Lala, let's start with you. So after experiencing many autoimmune-like symptoms associated with BII, and of course it included joint joint pain, fatigue, brain fog, Mm -hmm. you said rashes, that's just to name a few of your symptoms. You had your implants removed and are now what they call a quote-unquote explant. How did you have, uh, uh, excuse me, how long did you have your implants for? What type did you have? And when did your symptoms first arise after the breast augmentation? Yes, so I had silicone implants and I only had them for three years. And I started noticing symptoms actually maybe that same year I got them. It was actually a nightmare. I should have never gotten them to begin with, but I did start experiencing um, brain fog. Like I'm Lala and everyone always says, oh, you're in Lala land, but this was like to an extreme. I think the first thing that I noticed were heart heart palpitations, but I kind of ignored them because I felt like it was more stress related. And so I kind of just put that in the back burner. Um, Migraines, something that I never really had, uh, started, you know, consistently happening more and more every day to the point where I felt my head was going to explode. Then I started developing this weird rash all over my neck, especially in my eyes. You know, I couldn't even put makeup on because it was just, it would look bad. And so I noticed something's not right. I became very irritable and it's not like me. I'm always happy-go-lucky. And for me to have kind of switched and shifted attitudes to the point where I'm always kind of like angry or just not happy, I knew something was wrong. Your body was definitely speaking to you and you you are the best judgment of when something is not right or wrong. It's not called- to mention that my, my uh, breast implants became very encapsulated Ooh, to the that, point where they hurt that to even have yeah, a bra. That hurts. That hurts. That's a huge, huge, huge topic of discussion with breast implants in general. Now, Dr. Rankin, BII can affect people with any type of breast implant. We know this very well, including silicone gel-filled, saline-filled, smooth surface, textured surface, uh, round or teardrop-shaped, okay? But breast implant illness specifically can develop whether implants have ruptured or stayed intact. We know this as a fact. But are there any types of breast implants that are associated with a higher risk of BII? Um, well, in my practice, I take out every type of implant, smooth, round, textured, silicone, saline. So they all can lead to the development of symptoms we call breast implant illness. I would say there's a little bit more of a propensity for the silicone gel implants to produce this. But um, you know, we see it with all different types. 
And it's important to note, I'm going to piggyback off what you just said, that BII is not the same as the rare types of cancer that can can develop in the scar tissue and fluid surrounding a breast implant, such as implant-associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma or other forms of lymphoma and breast implant-associated squamous cell carcinoma. But it's extremely worthy to point out that BII can actually aggravate cells that are predisposed to these cancers. So it's all part and parcel and part of the bigger picture. Now, Lala, you recently explanted with the amazing Dr. Rankin. How did you and Dr. Rankin go about your specific diagnosis and how long after explanting did your symptoms take to reverse? Yes, I remember the day that I walked into his office and he he saw my my boobies. Uh, The first thing he told me was that they were extremely capsulated and that I needed to get rid of them and he what I love most about him is how compassionate he was but how direct he was he didn't try and sugarcoat anything he laid out the facts just how as he saw them and I can appreciate that but he told me that I needed to remove them and uh, that he actually told me that the left one would probably be the biggest problem because it was bigger and it was super it was harder than the right one and um so he gave me the options, and, you know, at first when you hear this, you are taken back. I know I remember crying, but I was actually crying of, like, relief. At least I have an answer. I know it's not me. It's it's the implants. So I can appreciate his honesty and, you know, how he came about to, like, telling me I need to get rid of them, and, and this is something that has to get done. Well, I'm glad you ended up in the right hands, and it's important to note that he's so, so so VIP that he has a three-year waiting list. Now, (laughs) I have conducted over, I want to say, two dozen interviews on BII with actual breast implant illness patients and survivors, and they have stated that their symptoms can really appear any time after implant surgery. Uh, Some said that they started to develop breast implant illness immediately, while others said that it took them years. But interestingly, a lot of the symptoms of BII are associated with autoimmune and connective tissue disorders. And I said this before, but lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, um, scleroderma, and all of these these autoimmune and connective tissue disorders that are part of a bigger picture. It's your body actually speaking to you. This doesn't happen because it, you know, out of nowhere, this is your body trying to communicate. So it's important to understand those symptoms and to address them. Now, Dr. Rankin, what are the current diagnostic criteria for BII and how is it actually diagnosed? Uh, BII is really a diagnosis of exclusion. Um, we're still trying to elucidate all the symptoms present, but we see a multitude. If you look currently at the FDA's website, they have a page on breast implant illness where they list the most common symptoms like joint pain, brain fog, um, skin issues, anxiety. Um, but in my practice, I see literally A through Z in, in the symptoms that are, are present, presenting in my patients. Well, those numbers and those statistics are staggering and definitely have to be addressed because factually, more than 365,000 women receive breast implants uh, per year. That was a statistic from 2021 and 2022, and that's a 44% increase from the year before. And this means that breast augmentation remains as one of the most common and popular plastic surgery procedures performed in the U.S., And they're saying it has a low risk of complications, right? So these segments, Lala's story, Danica Patrick's story, you know, uh, Black China's story, it's important to tell these stories because you have to spread awareness. Lala, when you suspected you had BII, did you ever second guess yourself? And, And if you did, which I'm sure you did, thinking you're going crazy, what steps did you take to seek the right diagnosis and of course treatment which we know was explanting but what were those steps yeah so at first i i didn't want to believe it i kind of was looking for other excuses to like no this can't be it it's it's not me like i'm not one of those um and obviously it was all driven for fear you know the fear of unknown the fear of like well if it is the implants and i have to take them out what am i going to look like what is my body going to go through will i be able to breastfeed the day that i have children all these and then also what am i going to look like as women yes we do worry about what we're going to look like we do worry about our significant others are they going to get turned off all these things that ran through my head that finally came i i I came to a conclusion 
well, what matters most? What I look like or what I feel like, you know? And, and health really is, is the main thing here. If you're not healthy, then you, you don't really have anything. So healthy is sexy. And I realized, okay, it's definitely my implants. I got to do research. And that's when my cousin and I started looking for doctors. We started looking at different women's videos and Instagram posts and Facebook and all these things. And uh, that's when we're like, okay, we have to do this. And we're going to do this together. And that's why... We love Dr. Rankin. Every story that we read happened to be a patient of Dr. Rankin's. His staff, amazing. And so we knew it was a no-brainer. I had to do this, and it had to be with Dr. Rankin. Well, you know, healthy is sexy. We're going to coin that. I love that you said that because it's the actual truth. And as women, as trailblazers like yourself that are going out there and paving the way and leaving a path where there really is no trail because breast implant illness is not a common thing and people don't even know about it. So standing up to the big pharmaceutical giants and taking a stance is extremely, extremely exemplary of you. So you are a trailblazer doing what you do. Thank you, Lala. Now, Dr. Rankin, although research is underway to figure out the exact cause of BII, it's not currently an official diagnosis per se <clears throat> per se BII is a cluster of symptoms that don't fit into any other classic disease diagnosis eventually i'm hoping that it's going to be recognized as a medical condition but that process as we know is going to take a lot of time and in the meantime insurance companies they don't really necessarily cover the explant costs and as i said before women don't implant to explant it's just not a thing. So what steps does the medical community need to take to push insurance carriers to cover the explant surgeries? Well, I think it's true what you said, that uh, women that get implants, they don't anticipate having to remove them, having to remove them because they're making them feel poorly. So um, it's certainly not a purely cosmetic procedure. I think it all starts with advocacy from patients, advocacy from other specialists like um, rheumatologists, primary care doctors, to let the insurance companies know this is something real. Um, there should be advocacy at the level of our Congress people um, who have the power to dictate or to discuss with the insurance companies that this is a, a real diagnosis and these women need to be heard. Without a doubt, we definitely should be taking this to Congress, and that's probably my next step uh, because that's what needs to be addressed, and especially mm-hmm. with the insurance carriers and the FDA because they are complicit in all of this. Let's make no mistake. Now, Lala, after explanting, did you choose to reconstruct, and what did that entail? I chose to have a lift. Uh, Dr. Rankin suggested I, that I would need one, so I trusted his opinion and went with it. Um, I was a little bit scared as to what the scar would look like but I'm pleased to say that I barely even have a scar like I've healed very well and at the end of the day I'm like I'm not gonna be walking around topless <laughs> so you look sexy it's perfectly, AF it's perfectly fine I do want to point out that explanting is not a trend I've I've heard that uh, numerous times and it really irks me and it, it actually makes me very sad because women who have had to explant, they don't do it just, oh, one bright morning I woke up and I decided I want to get rid of them. It's because their health is not right. You know, like who wants to spend an extra amount of money to take them out after putting them in? It's health-wise, something's not right, and obviously they they need to do this. So for that word, the trend, like if you're going to get a new haircut or, you know, do something like that, it that really bothers me because I feel like it undermines what these women are going through. A hundred percent, without a doubt, no one implants to explant. We've talked about this over and over again, and it's the medical community itself that's complicit in all of this, including the FDA, because we know what backs that, and it's called Big Pharma, and it has a lot of funds and money available, so why would they denounce this? This is sexy. This has to be a thing, but thank you for standing up. Now, Dr. Rankin, what advice do you have for, for a woman wanting to explant but fearing the reconstruction step? Um, Well, I think like anything in life, experience is key. So you should go to a doctor that's, first of all, board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, but a doctor that has a lot of expertise in explanting, does a lot of explants in their practice, believes uh, in BII as a diagnosis in women. Um, So I think, again, going to someone very experienced in this because it's not uh, a generally easy procedure. Definitely not an easy procedure. Definitely need to go to somebody experienced, but I'm going to give uh, all our audience some food for thought. If the doctor that you are explanting 
with is currently implanting and currently doing breast augmentations, that should be a red flag. Ethically, that should be something that you do not stand by. You can't have the cake and eat it too. So the fact that you, Dr. Rankin, chose to stop implanting and and really focus solely on explanting speaks volumes. And again, they're a gentle strength is stronger. And you have done that. So thank you so much for the women that are out there suffering that you are paving the way for. Now, Lala, what advice do you have to women out there thinking they are crazy and that their symptoms are psychosomatic? Yeah, my advice to the women out there, you're not crazy. Um, Something is going on. Pay attention to your body. Your body is trying to tell you something. So listen to it. Do not feel ashamed. It's perfectly fine to kind of feel like, oh, man, what did I do to myself? Why did I ever get these implants? Because I went through those emotions and I've lived through it and I've gone through it. So that's perfectly fine. You're human. You live and you learn. But if your body is not right, it's probably the implants. Take them out. Don't second guess it and and go for it. You're only going to feel better. You're only going to feel better. Well, there you have it, my dear friends. Lala, thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Rankin, thank you so much for piping in. It's always a pleasure having you on. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Can't wait to re-promote this segment and make sure that the voices are heard. Now, listen, guys, the debate regarding the possibility of breast implants has been present actually factually since 1960s there's a theory that stemmed from an author's concept of human um, adjuvant disease and it refers to human exposure to a foreign object that causes autoimmune or uh, rheumatic diseases right and the theory was gradually introduced to the public during the 1980s and later it gained the attention of the FDA which in part led to the removal of silicone implants from the market in 1992. So that's very interesting. You guys should research that. We're all about edutainment here at WOR. Thank you so much for piping in. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much to all of you listening. That was our Healthy Minutes segment brought to you by Biche Cucina. That was iHeart's very own on-air personality, Lala Gonzalez. <laughs> you definitely have to check her out. She airs every single night, Monday to Friday, 7 p.m. to midnight on 103.5's KTU. That was the awesome Dr. David Rankin. You could head directly to their website at David Rankin, MD. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this.